if the uh, mods and regulars in chat could be awesome enough to just uh, type the uh, exclamation mark multi command once in a while. And uh, that way everyone can get the view of both of our streams, get both of our lovely observings. And then when we face off against each other, do we play last or, or do we play like partly? I think, I think we play last because some players are going to be late, some are early. So we're just going to do it at last. I think that makes it easy. So we're going to actually be facing off against each other, guys. And that's when you really want the, the multi view because then you can see both our viewpoints. And it's just more exciting and generally awesome. Um, to see For sure. How much we're, we're both screwing up and destroying each other. Okay, so let's introduce our players in the bottom right. We have from Beastie Boys. It is Tony Montana. Looking good with his orange, orange tearing down there. And yeah. Of course, up here at the top left hand side, representing Taste the Bacon. It is Bali. Okay, so TVP first game. Always uh, excited to see something else than TVT, since that's what's usually <laughs> happening on my stream when we do <laughs> tournaments and stuff. Yeah, I feel you. It took it took such a long time for me playing random all the time before it, the like ratio of people actually playing in like little matches and stuff changed. Like, I'd be like, "Hey guys, let's do a four v 4 Seven Zergs in it. And I'm like, "Yeah, ah, okay, like." <laughs> All right, I, I guess we're all just running speedlings at each other then. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Oh, yeah, I know that feeling. We actually did a FFA, and it was seven Terrans and one Protoss, and it was just like siege <laughs> tanks everywhere. And I was like, well, this is gonna this is gonna take a while. That's like the perfect opportunity for all the Terrans to take out their anger, man. They're like bloody Protoss. <laughs> this is one Protoss in the room. Yeah. Seven Terrans. Yeah, They've I think. All had a couple of too many drinks. Yeah, I think he actually died first in that game, so. <laughs> People were like, he's here, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Both so expanding. Yeah. What, uh, do you know what uh, MMR or League these guys are? Or okay, so these guys are Diamond 2 slash 3. Um, hmm. I think Bali is Diamond 3, like fresh. And Tony, I think, is Diamond 2. Okay, cool. So slight MMR edge for uh, Tony, but definitely 3.9 and 4.1. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty that's close. Good, in my opinion, that's that's like as close as you can get. 200 MMR is pretty much nothing. Because yeah. as anyone who plays a lot of ladder knows, on any day you can go up or down 200 MMR if you have a good or a bad day. So these guys should be pretty evenly matched. And uh, here on Ascension to Iron, it is a big macro map. And uh, Bali, not really trying to be secretive, just puts the uh, Robo down right in front of that dude. Nice little harass. Almost gets a probe. Disrupts some mining. But, uh, you know, most importantly gets the, the Robo Scout. So he knows what he's facing. Uh, doesn't have to worry about Oracles, DTs, or anything like that. He's going to be the starport going down back at home. Matana opting for the, uh, the bunker opening. I like this. Uh, you know, a lot of players, I think, feel a little bit too pressured by uh, the new stalker no and they kind of really screw up their opening their, like starport gets really delayed or something no like that but you know he's just kind of like oh, let's, we'll just get a bunker for safety swap the factory over probably get a couple hellions out very typical opening of course uh punishes a lot of protoss players who don't wall off and while we've got gateways at the front for bali there is no wall off just yet so wouldn't mind seeing four hellions on the way for uh tony and trying to do a bit of a run by yeah, I can't remember which player started doing this, but it's kind of becoming like a normal thing to do. Just a Reaper plus two Hellions, you, or at least one Hellion. You always get the scout no matter yeah. what. Uh, stalkers can't really chase the Reaper or the Hellion, you know, too, too well. So you always know what the Protoss is doing. And that's always nice. Oh, we do see I four Hellions. Like made a lot of sense as well. Oh, yeah, nice. I think this is, this is really powerful, right? Because two Hellions, like sometimes you'll get, you always get a few probes. Sometimes you'll get a lot, but... Especially, I mean, he's seen no wall off at the front. Like, he saw the pylon placement, and he was like, well, you can't really... You can do a semi-wall with that, but you probably won't. So, uh, if he just runs in there and that's not being walled off, then uh, four Hellions can just win the game, especially with the Liberator coinciding with that. Of course, the weak point of Tony's build is he doesn't really have a lot behind it. So, he's just relying on the bunker for safety and probably will get a siege tank out. Um, but there's no warp prism on the way. You know, there's no real counterattack. There's no blink. It's just charge... Three stalkers for the defense. Not really enough to deal with this just yet. Bali's going to need to be very well positioned 
Otherwise, a lot of probes can get, get killed here. Alright, so he starts the third as well at the same time. The Observer did spot the army, but it's one of those things. He saw it, but did he see it? And the Liberator is getting in position. The Stalkers are not moving. So this is going to be a lot of their probes, I think, coming up. Uh-oh, they're lining up! Oh, no! <laughs> Bali! Spread, 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 oh. spread! Oh, my lord. 13 probes killed. The Liberator is... Oh, my god. In the main, though. Well. 9, <laughs> 10, <laughs> 11, 12. Oh. This is what we call a uh, yikes when this happens. When you lose 22 probes, uh, it's rough. This is why we kill people warm off. Uh, and just always leave a stalker in hold position on the wall. It's actually really funny because people do that and then you see Terran players coming and they try to knock the stalker out of the wall with the reaper grenade and they yeah. run in anyway. And you get these like funny little mini games, but yeah, it's just the, the, the power of dealing with that is, is really hard. Four Hellions very difficult. Um, Bali maybe should have just left the probes mining because what he actually did by running them away was I think he, he kind of allowed the Hellions to both be evading the stalkers and zealots, which were doing a circle around the Nexus. While, while killing the probes, whereas if the probes just stay there, yeah, you're going to lose a lot of them, but they're not going to stack up quite as much, and, and the Hellions kind of need to stay in the one general area to target them. So maybe a little bit of a misreaction there from Bali. Bali does have a third Nexus. He's just going to be building a ton of probes to try and recover, but that Liberator is still alive this time, though. Stork is well positioned. Yeah, so like you said, sometimes it's just better to... to leave your workers if your army is right there because you might be uh, helping your opponent you know unintentionally but back in tony montana's base he's just going for a strong 2-2 base push and this is another thing that a lot of terrans have been doing uh, i've seen this innovation do like first kind of really really focus on that some kind of harass and just follow with good old two base like really strong timing with either siege things or you know some liberators as well and just try to siege up the protoss and try to take the third base out. Yeah. And look at the probe count, right? Bali's game plan should be like, all right, let's get back up to 50 probes, build an army, and maybe I can defend the next push. But it's like, well, you're not even, at, you, just, you just hit 40 probes. I haven't really started the, the big army production. It's a couple of unupgraded stalkers, Zelotin and Immortal. And he's going for a forge and a Templar archive. So I feel like he probably needed to focus on pure Zealots after taking that early damage. I think the, the best kind of comeback move for Protoss is to say, skip gas, skip tech, mass Zealots and probes. And if I just get enough minerals, maybe I can stop the big tank push. And, and from there, you can start to transition onwards. But look at this Liberator siege up on the back line. That's going to pull him way out of position. Meanwhile, Marines and tanks coming forward on the front. He's just going to siege up right there. The stim forward is good. This is a really good push from Tony. Yeah, once again, the same Liberator from the beginning. 17 kills, denying the mining. Probes away. All the army goes down from the Protoss. Some more Warpins coming in. But I think he just took a, a little bit too much damage in the early game. Yeah. Stalkers in small numbers, not very good against those marine tank pushes, uh, but just, just too much damage, like he said. Very clean opening there from Tony Montana, safe with the bunker, which he never ended up needing, but still puts on the pressure, gets an absolute barbecue going, and a very nice start there for the Beastie Boys. Well played, well played. Thank I... you very much, Vil321, for the three months up. Appreciate that, dude. Just, uh, just very kind of like, you know, Good old harass into a two base push. There was no real opportunity uh, for Bali to counterattack because there was a bunker, there was a siege tank, he even had a missile turret, you know, in case of DTs happening, something like that. So, I like that kind of gameplay. He, he knows what he wants, he has the build in mind, the play style, and he just goes for it. Hells yeah. I think it's such a good way as well to uh, develop your play. You know, if you've got some nice tight opening pressure, following up with the two base push is, is really great. And I think the cool thing as well with uh, with Terran build specifically is you can have an opening like this and it's always pretty smooth, I think, to go into the two base tank push. But realistically, you could just go three barracks and then drop the third command center, double engineering bay and, and play a macro game and it's the exact same opening. So that's what I kind of like is like whenever I'm... Um, kind of talking to the Terran players and like, okay, if you're learning like a new build order, this is like the best first place to start is like, no matter what your opening is, try to kill your opponent with a two base push afterwards. And then like, once you get the opening really good, then you can mix it up if you want and play more, more macro games. And it's, all, you know, pretty much the exact same opening just goes either direction completely smoothly. And 
Montana there, very smooth tank push. He had good macro behind it as well, so I think he was in a pretty much unstoppable position. Uh, next up, looks like we're going to have a Vormant for... Uh... So now we're going to have Master 2 slash Master 3. So we have uh, Flash from my side and Vormant. We actually, oh, actually cool. he played last yeah, time. Cool. He played last time against this. Uh, Warment, yeah, and he uh, he ah. took two games. He he won like I think fourth game, and then he won the ace match as well. So he did pretty well. All right, yeah, vormant has been pretty good. I recently modded Vormant on my stream in a, a day when there was a lot of. Oh my God, what the hell does this grill do? Quick, quick on this malware. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and he's been a great mod since then as well. So not only a good Starcraft player, but a fantastic mod has been helping me out. Um. <laughs> And I believe um, he is Protoss, as far yes. as I know. That's the main race which he should be playing. Um, and Flash is a Terran player. I yes. I remember Flash. Because Flash has played in a couple of my tournaments as well. And, um, oh, nice. Mech player, usually, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'll... About those Protoss, we'll have to find out. <laughs> yeah, actually, when, when we do, like, sub tournaments and stuff, I think, like, 90% of people playing it is just Mech. But then against Protoss, they do Bio. So... Ah, yeah. Yeah. You're the mech guy, right? Like, when people ask me, like, like you used to be anyway, because like, you've got, like, quite a few videos talking about mech and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I still I, I still love mech. Point, I, I point people towards you, your content. Like, people are like, Pig, can you do some more mech videos? I'm like, I don't know, guys. Like, it's been, it's been almost two months now of me playing mech in one matchup, and I'm still pretty average at it, because I haven't really done, like, the let's sit there and grind out a whole, you know, session. Because mech's, like not the easiest thing to practice either in terms of like you can you can practice a bio opening for terran versus protoss right yeah and it's like that first five minutes is like just like you get that down and everything else happens a bit more naturally with mech it's like no you should also have your 13 minute tank push and air transition quite well planned out so it's like it, it's a longer kind of practice period before you get good at it so i still consider myself a bit of an amateur at mech so i'm always like guys go to beasties youtube go to beasties stream <laughs> He's, he's actually like a person who's played at a pro level playing mech builds. You know, you've actually beaten legit, legit pro gamers um, when mech wasn't really popular, and you were, you were one of the few guys doing it. Yeah, thank you for the, for the shout-out. But yeah, I just love mech. I mean, mech is, uh, mech is love, mech is life. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just a completely different way of playing Terran, I think. It's, it's so much different in bio. It, it feels like a completely uh, different race, in my opinion. Is this a best of seven or a best of five? Okay, so we have four players on each side. And what we're doing is playing out the, the four matches, no matter what the score is. And then you and I yeah. finishing the best of seven. Or just playing a best okay. of three or best of five, whichever we decide. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. so. I was like, I was like, what scorecard should I grab? I was like, all right, I'll just use the best of seven one for now. I think that's pretty accurate. And uh, awesome, man. I'll let you introduce your boy. Okay, in the bottom left, we have another orange Terran. This time, it is Flash. Is that the team color? Orange for the Beastie Boys? Yeah, because of the, the logo. Ah, nice. nice. Yeah. And up here in the top right-hand side, not really the color of bacon, but we'll count it anyway. In the red, <laughs> the Protoss player, it is Vormant. What should, uh, what, what should your team color be then? Pink? I think pink, yeah, I think pink should be the color. I actually mentioned it once, like, oh, it would be cool if, you know, you guys picked orange when we do, like, Clan Wars and stuff. And uh, I guess it's working. <laughs> Hells yeah. I, um, I've had issues, because, like, I, I played with pink for a long time, but then, like, the minimap can be a bit confusing. <laughs> Sometimes, if, like, your opponent's red and you're pink. Um, oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Um, like, in games and stuff, especially, I was like, oh, this is a little bit strange. So uh, Marine first from Flash, doesn't want to waste any gas on the, the Reaper, even though there is a jump up ledge on this map, uh, still a good way to play is just going Marine first, gonna get that factory down, um... oh he's gonna go, Ooh, oh that's interesting, oh actually there's been a new build and someone asked me about it on stream but I haven't really checked it out, uh, I think what you do is you open like, you know, just expand and then you go Marauder Concussive Shell, okay never mind. Um, he's adding another barracks. Yeah, the, cy yeah, the Cyclone Marauder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure how it plays out. 
I've been meaning to try that build as well, and I haven't. I haven't done it either. I've been like watching like random people do it on stream, and then I see someone do it in GSL and all, like other Korean tournaments, and I'm like, yeah, oh, it must be legit, right? You know, TY is doing it. Okay. Um, yeah, it was, I think it's two Marauders and a Cyclone get across the map really early, and it's like it's like a barracks delayed gas. I think it's like a, a an 18 gas or something like that, if I remember correctly. I'll have to go back and actually. Start. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I didn't check it. I just heard about it. I was like, mm, that's it sounds sounds interesting, but I think this is more like. Oh, if you pressure move the stalker, I can kind of pick it off and maybe, you know, make you sweat a little bit if you move them rotors across the map. The Protoss might add like a shield battery, you know, chrono boost more units or something like that. Yo, uh oh, concussive is ready in two seconds. No vomit, don't do it, don't do it. He kills the bot. No! Do it, do it, do it! Oh, oh, flash, flash! No. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, forward. <laughs> yes! Vomit, run. I have a new rule in PBT. I mean, I play on the NA server where it's like a really weird PBT meta because there's just not that many Protoss players. So mm -hmm. like, PBT on NA server sucks. Um, I'm just gonna go out and say that. Like, <laughs> occasionally I'll play like the actual pro gamers, and I'm like, wow, you guys actually know how to play this matchup. Like, you're <laughs> so far beyond my level. Um, I'm starting to play more on the Korean server where where I feel like the players have a much better understanding of the PBT matchup. But I have a new rule where it's like that first stalker never goes across the map anymore because everybody <laughs> has like the Reaper Cyclone trap. You know where the Reaper tries to bounce you into yeah, the yeah, yeah. And all they all they have a concussive marauder and a cyclone. Like there's always some combination of units that are designed to trap you. But uh this time around Vomit gets the stalker out. Now he's got the really fast prism and he's got the wall off at home. This is like my favorite opening right now. Because you can just be so annoying with these stalkers, you sh he should be able to see everything that Flash is doing, and hopefully get a bit of damage done as well. Might be able to get this exposed tech lab with the shields. Oh, is he gonna warp in as well? He shouldn't, but never mind. The warp prism was looking like it was about to. Yeah, I like this as well. I mean, it's it's kind of like free damage, right? You're not supposed to lose yeah. these stalkers unless you mess up really bad. So, you know, with three stalkers, you can one shot Marines, one shot SCVs, and you know, picks four SCVs. Marine gets out of there. Not bad. I like to I like to do this with uh, five stalkers or six stalkers, where I do warp in on the low ground and I just have to do an emergency ferry in and out if, mm. uh, if there's enough Terran units coming up. Super it's a dirty. Much more <laughs> dirty version of it. It's, it's yeah. really I call it the blink no blink opening because you like pretend you have blink on your stalkers, but you never actually made it. You just have a warp prism and make you know abuse the power. Yeah. But a good defense by Flash, to be honest. He hasn't taken too much damage. Um, and, you know, he has actually killed a few workers himself this game. Um, this Marine at the third has three kills. Wait, I was like, did we miss a drop or something? Yeah, but... I brought up the workers kill tab, and I was like, what? And then there's a Marine. I think he just kept sending single yeah. kills to the third. The Marine kept killing them. I don't know. <laughs> It was probably like one of those like sends a sends a probe. It's like there's no probe. He's like, did I send a probe? I'll just send another <laughs> one. Sends another one. Is like, wait a minute, is there something there? Killing my units. Oh, man. This is a scary push right now, and he's left his stalkers on the opposite side of the map. So this is something against the three barracks. Uh, as soon as you scout that as a protoss, normally you want to really be very careful. Now he's built a second immortal, which if he focus fires the marauders is the key to holding this. Problem is that those marauders just shoot the marines. And like this bio just stims on top, it will be able to kill every one of these Protoss units really quickly. The Stork is being really annoying on the offense though. Gonna create a very scrappy situation. Great micro from Vormit keeping these low hit point Stalkers alive. But back at home, here comes the Marine Marauder Stim and the Immortals are exposed. No Guardian Shield yet, which is actually huge to defend this. And he also uses the Force Field, which I think is a... Uh... I'm, not, I'm not sure about that one. The Immortal pops on the wrong side, loses to bio. Meanwhile, on the other side, SCV is going down, but Stalker's kind of AFK, not really following up on the on the aggression, and I think Flash has enough Marines to kind of hold the uh, harass back in his base. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit messy there for both players, but with the Stim Marines, he should be able to hang on, and that third Nexus is taking a lot of damage, so Vormit here, I think overextending just a little bit against this, uh, this 3 barracks. Let's see, can he stabilize and save the Nexus? Looks like he will be able to. But uh, there we go. Flash does take out a Stalker on the way out. At the end of that, the numbers look pretty even, but you got to remember with double mule dropping, um, uh, the income should be ahead for uh, for Flash. And he's still got a lot of bio coming out, and most importantly, medivacs are now entering the fray. Compare that to Warmint's side of the map, no Twilight Council. Yes, he's got plus one armor almost finished, but no Twilight. That means no blink, no charge. And when you enter this stage of the game where you've got large kind of stim forces coming out, 
you really need to get those upgrades as Protoss. And the Twilight Council is going down only now for Vormund. He's got to just kind of turtle up and defend for a while. And he's actually moving out with his army. He's Oh man, his main is so exposed right now. So right now he is ahead on bases, but behind on economy, behind on tech. The only thing that he kind of has to do right now, like you said, is just kind of defend, try to get his probes back up and try to tech to something because he needs blink, he needs charge. You know, needs Templar Archives, but the drop is coming into the main base. Just one Stalker. Warp in a four Zealots, but those are slow Zealots, and they will not be able to do much if Flash just micros a little bit. The army is going back, but I think he will be taking uh, quite a bit of damage here from this drop. Zealots like, please, just let us kill something. All they managed to do is damage a Marine, does nothing. These Stalkers are going to go down as well. Finally, the first Marine falls, but already great damage there. You know, it wasn't game ending, but this is the sort of just efficient pickoffs, which, uh, which you know, Flash has, has got to use. He's got to say, look, I got Stim, I got Bio, I got Metavax, he's got a Widow Mind Drop making his way on the south side of the map, and he's got his third command center behind this. Second engineering bay is on the way, as well as an armory. Upgrade-wise, he's ahead in upgrade. We don't even have plus one attack started yet for Vormit. And, ooh, Vormit's no. actually getting caught on the southern side of this map. That's actually Great huge. That's actually huge. When, when you play Terran... Oh, there's another drop in the main. The same one coming back in. No units there. The probes will be going down. And Warman just kind of getting further behind. He's now behind on probes, which against Terran... Oh, the Widow Mine doesn't actually hit anything. But yeah, losing probes in the main this week. So it was a good shutdown on the third base from Vorman. So, you know, there was something there. Vorman is still ahead in army and he does mm -hmm. have charge on the way. That's, it's, it's not game over these amounts of damage, you know, he has split his army reasonably well, but it's just, it's, it's this thing where I feel like once Liberators start coming out, the Terran will be ahead, and look at the gas bank for Flash, dude, 2-2 two, two starting, like, I'm envisioning two minutes from now, when these upgrades finish, if he's got, like, four Liberators and just a big bio push, I kind of feel like Vormit's just going to be stuck on charge lots and, like, unupgraded Stalkers, so, I don't know, maybe Vormit's going to go out and try to counter push, maybe use uh, a sort of opening here in Flash's armor. Flash is pushing forward quite eagerly. He is still down on army supply. Vomit may have an opportunity to jump on this force and this may give him the edge he needs. He definitely needs to be careful, Flash that is, because there's no reason to overextend here. He's ahead in every way. She just stutter step a little bit, kite, realize that he cannot fight this army for now and just try to retreat. Luckily for him, there's no blink. So he cannot be chased down. And this is one of those things where he might have been careful earlier because of the blink, but he should realize by now that there's actually no blink from these stalkers. Otherwise, they would be chasing all the way. So he should just go back, wait for two, those two to upgrade. He actually added two more barracks back on the natural. So seven barracks right now going up. And just get that 2-2 two, two and go for it. Yeah, he's got to pull back though for now, right? Look at the army supply. He's, he's down an army supply again. He's kind of exposed out here at his third. I think Vormit's just going to go for it. Like, Vormit's teching up behind it, but he knows his economy is not the best. And, oh, I mean, he's, he's scanning, trying to get an observer. He doesn't know this army is about to jump down. It's all about those Widow Mines. There's two more Widow Mines on the back end, and these two Widow Mines on the front. If they get the money hits on the Zealots, Vormit can't really achieve anything here. Plus two armor about to finish. Vormit was waiting for that one. And Flash just needs to evacuate, I think. Just let the third base, wait for your upgrades, don't overextend. And just kind of played safe. Meanwhile, back in the main base, Liberator, eight, nine probes, ten probes oh, going down. Nice Zealot warping in the main of Flash as well, but they're not being sent in right now. He's so focused on his main army, but oh, Flash overextends a little bit. Some nice force fields from Vormit. Still not sending those Zealots in the main, though. That's costing him right now. He was so distracted by that Liberator. There we go. Now the Zealots go into that main mineral line, and this is where the game gets chaotic. Both players started to take big amounts of damage. Flash still uh, with a much larger economy, even with a fourth command center on the way. If he can just reestablish his control over his main base and defend everything here, he should be okay. Liberator's on the third base. I think gonna gonna keep him alive here. Yeah, I think Vorman's realizing he can't really get too much more done here. He loses the zealots in the main. He's gonna try and go around here. Oh, this is very risky here. That Widow Mine not really getting too much value. These Liberators doing a great job here, but there's no Zealots left on the ground. Vormant's valuable units are now exposed. Great SCV pool from Flash. I think Flash has done it. Snipes the War Prism. Sick play. Yeah, the SCV pool kind of sealed the deal. Every time you're playing in Sprotos, if there's no Zealots, always SCV pool. The Stalkers are always kind of derping around with the SCVs, and Bio can just... You know, have free reign over the over the Protoss units. 2-2 two, two is done, and from here on out, he should just rally his units across the map, and he should know 
you know, I killed his whole army, I can try and finish the game right now, no need to wait, uh, and give Protoss, you know, chance to get tech out or more upgrades or more units in general. Yeah, I mean, Storms just finished, but didn't have any High Templar gathering energy this whole time. If there was a few Storms, that, that you know, there's always a chance, but without the High Templar ready, it's, it's not going to work. And it uh, looks like Flash is just a very clean game. The Beastie Boys bringing it in here with some very decisive Terran pushes. And so far, the uh, Terran player is showing how it's done in PvT. Another Liberator queued up in the main as well. And another one on the fourth base already. I actually wow. completely missed that one. It's a really good Liberator harass. And this is something that I always tell, you know, when people watch my stream, that's something you should always do, no matter what matchup you're playing, if you're playing Bio or Mech. This is so good because, you know, pushing on one side, sending Liberators on the other. The Liberator from the fourth rotates into the main base, the one from the main went to the natural. And you're just kind of, you know, making Protoss multitask a lot more than you should than you are because you're just shift queuing uh, Liberators. Meanwhile, he has to pay attention where they're going, you know, try to get in position to properly kill them. So, good, good Liberator That's harass. Like, every time he does this, it's like, well, cool, you've got all this pressure on, I'm damaging your economy, and he's like, I'm gonna add more barracks, I'm gonna add a fourth base, I've got ghosts on the way now, like, just sick macro play out of Flash, man, really impressive. The three observer squad on the natural, again, Liberator is back, killing some more probes, and I think, uh, unless he lands the sickest storms ever, this might be the beginning of the end. Yeah, the Liberator though, when he kills two High Templar, he's, he's just, it's not about winning for Vormint right now. It's about landing some sick storms and making the Terran, Terran viewers cringe. That's his goal. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, stim into me in a ball, please. Please stim into me in a ball. Yeah. And, uh, I think, <laughs> I think Lash is like, no, We've we all been there, twice. I think, once or twice. <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely had games where I'm pushing into the natural, I'm like, okay, come on, get out, and two storms land and my whole bio army dies, I'm like, well, GG is cold. <laughs> GG. Yeah, you know, like, when when you think it's, um, they're in, like, the middle of the ball, like, it's a really early storm that you didn't think they were going for, and you think they're just sentries, like, the energy bars in the middle of the, the Protoss ball, and you're like, yeah, cool, I can just stim on this army, and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> you're like, there were storms in there? Your yeah. Just disappears, and you're like... Oh, that's that's a really sad way to lose it. Yeah, I thought I was winning. Um, it's happened to me more than a few times, but that's why scouting is a good thing to have. Also, actually paying attention to what the energy units are, not just assuming they're little little force fielders. Yeah, so, always always make sure to click and check the uh, the energy, unless you have that thing uh, disabled of selecting enemy units, which I'm not sure why it, <laughs> why it exists, but. Yeah. Bloody beginner settings, man. You know, I actually had someone ask me, like, oh, how, do, how does he click on the enemy units? And I was just, like, kind of confused, oh, yeah. like, what do you mean? And he's like, I can't select the enemy units. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Really you know, I've really enjoyed, like, the last few months because we've got so many free-to-play players. And, like, these sort of comment questions are getting asked every day in my chat. I'm like, oh, wow, like, there's so many of these questions. I'm like, oh, I forgot people don't know this or this. Like, there's all these little base things. I'm like, yeah, guys, like, you know, you just... Just hop into your gameplay menu and all the things that aren't ticked, tick them. <laughs> yeah. You know, just cha change every default setting basically because the defaults suck. <laughs> uh, unless you want to, you know, just to have the game uh, be, be played on easy mo mode, then it, it should be uh, should be nice. Oh, sorry, guys. Thank you very much. I should have been paying a bit more attention in chat there. Um, yeah, Beastie's been very nice and clear. I'll turn him down a little bit because apparently I'm a bit too quiet in comparison. Because I was too lazy to fix up my levels when we first got on the call. Yeah, well, on my stream they're saying different thing that I'm loud that uh, that they can't hear you too too well. But for me, like you know, listening, you're super clear. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure if it's yeah. like Discord to to uh, ops something going on there or. Yeah, I mean, if you turn up your desktop audio on OBS, um, that will crank it, but that'll also crank you know. Audio no, it's sound. it's it's max. So, that's the thing. Oh, like Discord's max. Oh, you, you can turn you can turn it up, right? In in like your OBS, but it, it turns up your whole PC's audio. Yeah. So like if you go to the mixer, you I, you can boost it, but yeah, you then need to change your music down. You need to turn your in-game sound down. I will try and speak nice and clearly. Yeah, we we're not a we're not a professional you know bunch here. We're just you know. 
coming in, yeah. casting some games, playing some games, casual gamers. That's it. And I um, just realized, like, normally it's nice and cool overnight here in summer. I leave my house nice and wide open so that we can get some, uh, some air. It's 82% humidity, and I'm already sweating, and it's not even 8 a.m. in the morning. So I'm going to let you introduce both of the players. Wait, hold on a second. Where's your camera right now? Uh, bottom right. All right. So this, can, can you move your camera around in a bit of a circle? I just want to check. Up. Yep, that's good. Okay. I'm going to let you introduce the players and commentate. I'm quickly going to close my house up to try and stop the humidity getting in here. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, cool. Take it away, man. All right, in the bottom right, we have another orange boy, another orange Terran. It is Yepin. And yes, it is Yepin, I've asked. Not Jepin. And in the top left, we have the purple Zerg from Pigpan. It is Dark Minions. Actually... Dark Minions, I think, played also the last time we did uh, Clan War against Pigpan, where we ended up losing 3-2. to two. And I'm pretty sure he... W yeah, he did play, I remember. He did a uh, Roach build, and he was playing against Terran, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of like Roach Pressure, which worked out quite well, considering he did win that game. So we'll see what he decides to do this time, if that's maybe his playstyle. Although, he did open hatch first, and I, if I remember correctly, last time he opened with pull first. So, maybe changing it up? We'll see. Oh, they were playing each other last time? Oh, that's pretty funny. It was on, um, I, I remember the game, I just didn't know it was against Yepin. Interesting. Interesting. So we'll see what happens this time. I mean, I'm pretty sure both of them know that, that they played against each other, which is why, you know, Dark Minions maybe is not doing the same build, because, you know, Yepin is especially now SCV scouting as well. But that's uh, that's pretty funny, <laughs> the way it worked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Welcome so back. they play each other previously. Yeah, so they've... Uh, I, was, I was just mentioning Dark Minions, sounds familiar, and I was like, oh yeah, he played last time when we played. And then uh, Bulio said that they played against each other, which ah. is uh, a little bit of a rematch. <laughs> Dark Minions is um, he's really cool. So there's there's two players who used to always send me crazy replays of them just doing insane builds um, for my my icy far show where I cast viewer replays playing dumb challenges, right? Mm -hmm. And and Dark Minions was one of the two guys who would just send me like a planetary fortress rush or something like that, like every week, like he just. Send me like the silliest games, like nuke rushes, weird nidus worms. So he's he's definitely a player who's like he's comfortable throwing out some weird builds. But right now it's Jeffin who's getting the edge here. Holy crap, that Reaper is a murderer. Yeah. He just kills all four Zerglings. And oh man, Dark Minion's being forced to take what I call the awkward hatch. I I really hate taking that base. Yeah, every. Yeah, that's awful. Every time I see this base, I always think I'm gonna get all end off of like 40, 50 drones. Because that's what usually Zergs do, yeah. like, when you take forward hatch. Because it's, like, it's such a bad and awkward position because of this high ground right here. Um, that I, I always think, like, there's no way you're going to play a normal game after this. So I'm always kind of, like, you know, prepared to deal with any kind of shenanigans. But we'll see what exactly. he uh, decides oh, to do. Man. I remember when this map first came out and I was experimenting this. I was like, this hatch is just pocketed so nicely. Like, why not take this? And I tried it against a Protoss, and they went Archon drop. <laughs> and I lost like 43 drones in one game to a single Archon drop. And I was like, yeah, we're never taking this base again. Like, just, oh. that, that, that's when you transition into like, and that, that guys, is why we don't take this base. I just wanted to show you, you know, I knew this already, but just kind of proving it to you guys. Don't take this one. It's actually, yeah, that ledge above it is so abusive. Massive link counter, though. Oh, he's going full NA ladder. And there was a bit of downtime on the production on the factory there. The Cyclones are way off from starting. Six SCVs and a couple of mules. Going to take out the depot here on the low ground as well. I think if he actually ran into the main, this could have been game ending. Um, yeah, for sure. As it is, it's still massive damage. Yeah, he went for the safer option because... Uh, a little bit unfortunate because uh, for dark minions because Yepin was producing cyclones so he definitely had the time to run in there were no hellions but uh still does a lot of damage how many workers six workers plus picks off i think a mule or two so pretty pretty good damage to start things off 
you know, there is going to be a pretty scary Hellion Hellbat uh, Cyclone counterattack at some point. Second and third factory are on the way, but that armory almost finished. There's a Spine Crawler, which is nice, but we don't have extra queens. He invested in all those Zerglings, which means there's no transfuse. And because he lost all the Zerglings in the follow-up, if Jeppin plays this just right, he can definitely get back in this game, 100%. If he doesn't, like, if he just commits right at the perfect time, maybe even goes around the high ground and just harasses above the top of this third, rather than just committing to a frontal push, it, it could work. But who knows? Maybe he'll break it. We've only got two Banelings ready. We do have one transfuse. Two transfuses almost ready. They're not quite there just yet. Transfuse is ready. Will he land it? No, he doesn't land the transfuses in time. Oh, great bailing hit though. With the Hellbats gone, looks like that is going to be enough. That cleans it up nicely. And I think this is very, very good position for Dark Minions now. He, you know, deflected a counter push, did some damage on the other side. So all he needs to do is just drone up. He can uh, do this kind of attack. See if he can uh, do some more damage if possible. But behind this, he should be pretty safe to kind of do whatever he wants, at least for the next 2-3 minute, minutes. Yeah, Go QTC love. This, which is nice, but he is a little bit wasteful with the Zerglings. And I always feel like once you play this from a Terran perspective, you have a much more appreciation for how annoying it is if a Zerg player does the counterattack, does the damage, and then keeps the Lings alive. Because the Hellions can't really push across the map then. You've kind of got to leave more defense at home. And we all know what it's like as a Terran player if you're not pressuring the Zerg. By the time you get out there, there's creep halfway across the map. The Zerg has 60 drones, and you're like, oh, god damn it, Zerg is so broken. <laughs> so I, I feel like Dark Minions, even though he's in a great position, don't get me wrong, it's still a fantastic spot for the Zerg, um, is is a little bit wasteful with the Zerglings, and because of that, his worker lead's not quite as big as it could be. Yeah, so this is something I like to talk ab about quite a bit uh, on my stream or when I do guides, which is the importance of having the that mental edge. So him losing all those units, uh, you know, the Terran feels a lot more comfortable. Meanwhile, Dark Minions, because he lost the units, he had to remake Zerglings. So instead of, you know, just making 20 more drones, he had to remake Zerglings and he's kind of like, ah, is he going to attack me? Is he not? I better make the units. And then kind of neglecting a little bit of his advantage. Uh, so that's always something to consider if you have the map control and you know you don't want to take the risk of oh can I you know do something here can I do damage sometimes it's better to just stay back you have the advantage drone up you know get your creep spread going and you'll still have those units to kind of defend or do anything you know keep the map control defend the drops and so on it's often the difference with like the the pro gamers um you know from a regular gm player a lot of people say well you're in gm you're a, you're a god of starcraft and hey, don't get me wrong if you're in gm you're bloody good but the difference you see between a regular gm and a pro gamer is pro gamers when they get an edge they push that edge to the absolute limit right it's why pro gamers run away with games so quickly if they get like a big lead it's just it's often over but you'll see a lot of regular GM players just continue to play the same way they normally do. They won't adapt to their advantage as much, right? Whereas that's like the, the specialties. If you're ahead, well, you can actually find a way to play even greedier than normal, right? Or more aggressive than normal. Like really push your edges. Nice Thor drop coming in. There are a few Hydras, but I feel like that's not enough right now. Dark Minions, I mean, he's got the upgrade, but there we go. Hydra Corpse is flying off to the air. This fourth base is under threat right now. He's got a ton of Banelings. That's yeah, he he, he has the units, just not the right units. Like, just Banes and five Hydras. Five Hydras get killed very quick by the Thors. And this is something I love doing as well. Just kind of like, uh, follow it up with two medevac drops with Thors. You can always pick something off. And if you're Ooh. careful, if you're careful, you can also save both <laughs> Thors and both medevacs. Still That's kills the hatch. Name. Still kills the hatch. So I think it was worth it to losing one Thor. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. He's got like five Hydralisks as well. And yeah, this is this is good. I mean, he's, he's equalized at this point. Where's the fourth base? You know, yeah, we got an infestation. We might see swarm hosts or maybe vipers. Seems to be more common. Um, and Dark Minions, though, you know, only on three bases. He doesn't really have that economy lead. He's got a ton of Zerglings right now, but I think it's Hydras that are the powerful unit. We've got the Siege Tank count getting up. If Jeppin can just get over to this fourth base and just kind of turtle for a while, he's going to force it to the late game. And that's usually where the mech player has a bit more experience. So... I don't know how good Dark Minions late game versus mech is, but you got to be bloody good with things like Swarm Hosts or Vipers or Broodlords to actually compete with the late game mech player. And the mech player is always going to have experience at these later stages of the game. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> not always so much. Sometimes the Zerg player is like, I win in the first 12 minutes against mech or I die. Yeah, so I don't know for how good sure. Dark Minions is going to be. 
So this is a little bit awkward. His CC is actually blocking the pathway, so he that's something he needs to be careful of so that the uh, siege tanks wouldn't run into the Zerg units. But the CC will be lifting off soon, so he, he should be safe. We do see the pathogen glands, so he, it seems like Infester is on the menu. The attack comes here. Oh, no cancel. No cancel in the CC, but as a good mech player, he does have another CC ready to just plant because... No marines, no problem. <laughs> yeah, man. And there's, there's only so many hellions you need, right? To be fair, I do kind of like it when people do mass hellions against this Hydra Bane style. Like, where the Zerg player's like, I'm going to add some Broodlords, I'm going to add some Vipers. And then the Terran player's like, I have 45 Blue Flame Hellions. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I actually just beat you with pure Hellions. Haha. -ha! So there's some funny tech switches which happen against this, but man, the tanks aren't really siege right now. Bainlings get a few decent hits, but there's just not enough Zerg right now. He's having to pull back. He's got more Hydras on the way. I mean, you're right. He's getting Burrow and Pathogen Glands, but I'll tell you what's trash against Mech. It's, it's fungal, man. It doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Even if you catch the tanks on Siege, because it doesn't root them completely now, they can actually Siege up while being fungal. Uh, Hydras are trying to slow this push down, but oh, oh they Siege up. Oh, my God. Big volley on those Hydras. They're all deep in the red. And Jeff in here, man, he is absolutely killing it. The Beastie Boys bringing the house down, man. The the first mech we've seen. Well, it is against Zerg, but Hydra's pushing in. I think he will clear this in the end, taking quite a bit of damage, but cleans it up in the end. I think the problem moving forward for Dark Minions is the no creep spread. It's going to be really, really hard to engage into the mech army. So I think if uh, Yepin just kind of sieges up here, doesn't move too forward too much on the creep, doesn't go in open, um, it will be very, very hard to engage with Hydras off of Creep. Yeah, it's going to be really nasty in that area. And oh man, a lot of drones going down. Nine workers falling. Terran with more workers than the Zerg right now. Zerglings coming in. That's going to help break this. Finally, this forward position at least will go down. And I mean, Jeppin doesn't really have a lot of units behind this. He's going to have to pull back to his fourth and just kind of sit there. But he's got a fifth base down as well behind this. So both players very close in supply. Dark minions looking like he does want to counter push. I'd love to see some coop out of these overlords. There we go. Nice. Yeah, why not? Get a little mini highway on top of the Terran force going. Um, might have actually been able to overwhelm there, you know? Dark minions. I feel like Jeppin maybe overextended just a little bit, but now, yeah. as the Hellions and tanks kind of grow in number, it's going to get scarier and scarier. Uh, we do have a big link counter attack working their way down the left-hand side. Might find their way onto that fifth base. Oh, and the natural is not walled off. Oh. There's a uh, yeah. Probably assumes it is though, so he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't doesn't bother. Um, like, that's always walled off. Yeah, one thing one thing when you when what you learn when you play Zerg is sometimes you watch these games and you're like, oh my god, why didn't you finish? You could have pushed. But when you play Zerg, you don't know how many siege tanks there are behind the two siege tanks that you see. So it, yeah. sometimes it's very tempting to just go for it, but then there's like ten more siege tanks behind, and you just end up losing everything. So, you know, he pulled back, played it a little bit safer, which in that specific situation didn't, uh, wasn't necessary, but he's pushing again. That's a great position for Jeppin here. Jeppin's going to get a sick trade on these Hydras. Remember, these Hydras don't have upgrades. They, they've only got plus one carapace. No range attack upgrades. Um, you know, when you don't have any attack upgrades with your Hydras uh, and you're up against, I mean, there's no armor upgrades on the mech, thankfully, but you're still not killing these tanks very quickly. Hellions and tanks moving forwards. There's just not enough Hydras. Not enough Zerglings, there's just not enough units to go up this nice surround with the Queen Hydra. Actually kills way more tanks than I thought he would, and he kind of realizes, wait a second, the Hellions uh -huh. are gone. Let's jump on top of this. Somehow we're seeing a Zerg perpetually behind on supply with kind of bad creep spread, but hanging on because it's just such tiny pushes from Jeppin, and I really feel like Jeppin should, should pull back for a little bit here and focus maybe on some Hellion run buys. But, I mean, I guess he's still trading better, so it kind of doesn't matter. Like, he should be able to wear down Dark Minions by doing this. Yeah, I think that because every fight is close, he's kind of like, oh, I, you know, if I just push one more time, I can finish. But I agree with you, he should just, like, wait for 30, 40 more supply and then go for it. But there you go. Oh. The Zerg is engaging. The Ultra is popping out. Yeah, I'm not... Uh... Ultras are always nice the moment they pop out against mech, but I think exactly what the what the Terran is doing right now, Insta starts production of Thors, um, and that's kind of, I feel like, where you want to stop making Ultras. You don't want to overmake them, because the longer time passes, the Terran can get Liberators out, you know, can get Thors out, so it's kind of worse and worse for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I definitely agree with that one. I think, you know, just Ultra Hydra is still a very good ground-pounding army, though, if the Terran comes out into the open and lets you flank him. The Terran doesn't let you flank. Nice cleanup. Good defense. Yikes. Yeah, drone two drones for, um, what was it, like 10, 12 Hellions? Pretty good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a few Baitlings went down as well, but not too bad. I mean, the, the problem here is, like I said, it's Abyssal Reef. So how do you get a flanking engage? The Terran really needs to overextend. And you need Creep Spread as well. Creep Spread boosts this big, just attacking, non-spellcaster, non-viper, non-broodlord, non-swarm host army. This is the, the, I need to win the direct engagements army. And without Creep Spread, it becomes very hard to do that. So it's still possible. He's going to add investors actually for Fungal. That's going to be good to counteract ghosts as well, potentially. Uh, we do see a nuke. Oh. Very nice. Two ghost academies. <laughs> yeah, he actually has two. Lots of nukes this game. That's so cool, dude. It's always nice to see. Always nice. Love some nukes. But uh, Dark Man has actually did a pretty good job. Uh, at one point, he was behind, kind of hanging on. No creep spread, like I said, super hard to to kind of fight the Terran. But the creep spread is going out once again. He, you know, established the fifth base. Uh, what do you think about the base on the right at this point? I think this is just silly. I think he really needs to take those bases on the left. I think he's so worried about Hellion counterattacks on the left. He said, I'm just not going to take the left-hand side. And that's how I'll stay safe against Hellion run bios. But this, yeah. is, this is something you take when you've got like a 90 drone economy and you've got the Terran contained and you're just trying to mine out his side of the map. Uh-oh. Well. Oh, my God. Nuke launched on the left-hand side. Does he see? Dark Minions camera. Oh, he doesn't see. see. He has no idea. He's, he's spamming between his bases. He's looking for it. He's looking for it. He no! Nice. Both drone kills on that base. Dark minions. He's trying to counterattack with infestors right now, but there's a planetary fortress. Planetary fortress shuts down those infested Terrans, and the mech army is just pushing forward. Infestors dying on the front as well. Dark minions. He's running back and forwards with his infestors. He's trying to figure out what to do, but how is he possibly going to deal with this push? He's trying to come down. Oh, there's too many tanks. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> that ultra. <laughs> That that was brutal. That ultra just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love how there was a Thor trapped in the middle of the siege tanks as well. He had like 16 siege tanks sieged around him. I'm like, this is not something you run three ultralists into. Thor, Thor oh. Fortress right there. Thor Fortress when, <laughs> when siege tanks surround the Thor. <laughs> wow. Brutal. Savage. And just a little bit of wrecked. Yeah. I think this is going to be it. Jeffen with some sick mech play. Recovers up the great Ling run by from Dark Minions. Manages to counteract. He gets the damage done with the Thor drop. Follows up with just some beautiful mech pushes. Dark Minions not quite able to keep up. GG. And that's G -G. a 3-0 lead for the Beastie Boys. Looks like you guys pretty much have this one in the bag. Terran, Terran boys coming through. Always nice to see. Actually, a little bit of a surprise for the, for the end. So I hope our last player is uh, here and ready. But he is indeed not a Terran player. Oh my lord. Yeah, shocking, I know. This, one of these like people who is trying to prove that the StarCraft community, like you, you're allowed to watch a streamer who doesn't play your base. <laughs> yeah. You're allowed to like, <laughs> enjoy being part of a community. Like we don't need to be segregated. Like. Uh, yeah, it's actually funny. I was doing a I was doing a series for like reviewing replays and stuff and kind of telling people what they should do better. So I'm doing that. I'm like, okay, guys, let's see your replays. And like, out of five games, two were Protoss, two were Zerg, and I was like, uh, what's what's going on? And then the fifth one was Terran. I was like, oh, thank God, we have a Terran as well. You can't uh, have a majority non-Terran. That would yeah, be that's stupid. that's messed. I mean, why are you guys watching me? Come on. Okay, so Shout let me. To, um, to Probe in chat, by the way. He's uh, he's hoping he, he says he has a five hour layover in Frankfurt. So, continuing the legacy of pro gamers never actually demanding better flights when they uh, should. Um, just gonna take a little jab at you for that one, Probe, because there is a long history of Australian pro gamers and many pro gamers just accepting the first shitty flight they get offered. And, uh, you know, you can ask for a different one. And you just gotta learn to be a bit of a dick, man. You just gotta be a bit of a dick. Um, and just be like, nope, I refuse. I'm not waiting in an airport for five or six hours. There's always a better option. There there always is. Um, yeah, it's just the travel agents that esports companies and gaming companies use are really bad. Where? Um, he has a layover from Frankfurt to where? 
So I'm guessing that's to Leipzig. It's like and five hours. Wouldn't you just get a train? Like no, that's is, is like... that. No, that's crazy. I mean, it's not more than like thirty minutes it flight. Five hour train. Like at, at most, right? Like it wouldn't even be that long. Yeah, I mean, it takes like two hours to get from one side of Germany to the other on the train. So I'm like, why would you even wait in the airport? Like... <laughs> yeah, just just go walk. You'll get there. Exactly. I mean, go, like, go hitchhike. I mean, five hours for like a different continent, sure, but for uh, inside of a country that's you know not yeah, not that huge that you need airplanes to go from city to city. So guys, Frankfurt's there. It's there. yeah, that should only be a few. I, I I know Frankfurt to Cologne's like an hour and a half usually thereabouts. So it should be like two and a half hour train. That's yeah. Crazy man, five hour layover. That sucks, dude. I once had a, back when I didn't complain about my flights, the reason I'm, I'm trying to pester you about this probe is because I've had a lot of shitty layovers. So <laughs> I try to like shame the, the, the other players into not suffering the way I did because I literally made a nest in Frankfurt airport once. I was there for 12 or 13 hours and I literally was like, well, I'm gonna kill myself. So I just kind of pulled my clothes out of my luggage. I found a corner with a PowerPoint in some like dark corridor and I made a, a nest out of my like dirty laundry and stuff, and I just kind of like lay down in my nest and played Hearthstone on my phone for twelve <laughs> hours straight. By the end of which, I was going fucking insane. Um, but I, I survived, and after that time, I was like, "We're never going to accept a flight this shitty again." Because every time you ask, it's always like, "Oh, whoa, this flight's really bad. Isn't there a better one?" And they'll always say, "No, this is the best one." That's like always the first response you get. But then you're like, "Well, actually." I opened this thing called Kayak, <laughs> yeah. Google, and I found this flight that's like half the price, and it's way better. And they're like, oh. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they, they always uh, say stuff like, oh no, there's no other option. It's like, yeah, there, I just look, there's like two more flights going, so no, please, just come on. Don't, don't lie to me. I was um, coming back from Valencia in 2016. Actually, this was probably the turning point as well, because I remember I was like, no, I'm done with these bad flights. And... They just like could not find me a good flight, like because out of BC had to do it through the like flight, uh, you know, their their company or whatever, with DreamHack. And I was sitting there with him. We're like trying to call them. They're like, nope. There's like only this. This is booked out. This is booked out. And I don't like. Okay, so we've got me on a flight from Valencia to LA and then back home to Australia. It's like it's like this oh is like God. going in the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm literally flying the wrong way around the world to get home. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. And Todd literally like got his phone out and booked me a flight on his phone like six hours before it left. And and I was like, you guys can reimburse this, right? And Todd's, Todd's just like, don't worry, I have this sorted. He just like saved me from the most horrible trip of my life. And I was like, Todd, you're a legend. I'm always just gonna look up the flight myself because it's worth spending an hour looking up flights myself through all the different apps. Yeah, for then, sure. Uh, spending an extra 14 hours on a plane. So uh, yeah, go to, uh, I, I learned from Todd that day so a little bit of effort goes a long way when it comes to saving time on these flights. Yeah, for sure. Especially when the flights are long, which for you always are, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Like, it, it's funny because, like, I love doing Asian events because I'm like, it's direct and it's only a, a 10 to a 10 to 12 hour flight. And for me, I'm like, that's nothing. That's nothing. No, so the, the... It's a 14 hour flight and then I change and then I get on another, like, six and then another three hour flight or something like that. It's like, eh. <laughs> What's your what's your longest uh, not flight but trip from A to B? Um, I think it was that Frankfurt layover, and it was like forty hours or something. It was from WCS Poland, the one where uh, Mata played the finals against Lil Bell, and that was like forty plus hours, I think forty five hours maybe or something like door to door. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. It was obscene. Like Katowice is always bad, just because I have to take you know a flight through to Krakow and then drive like an hour and everything you know got to fly through frankfurt first normally but yeah it's, it's usually a couple of days it's pretty bad yeah i think the the my longest one was 40 hours it was to china my flight got delayed i missed a connecting flight to china and then i no. like on the way there i got sick and then i ended up playing tournament with like fever and it was oh, uh was that wesg yeah <laughs> Oh, that that was my worst event I think ever. I I hated every moment of it. I remember the look on your face. I was like, oh hey BC. I was like, hey I'm big. You know, hey. 
you're like, hey. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I was like he's dying. Like he's having a good time at all. Oh, and I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember. Um, oh, let me just write. Uh, I don't know if you remember the player player areas. We were like next to the like the outside, and it was extremely cold as well. And I was like, oh my god, this is not helping me at all. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty damn freezing, man. Um, so. He's here, we're getting the players ready. Cool, that's awesome. Oh, ALX Penguin, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, my dude. Really appreciate that. Um, so, oh, there's an interesting program that Kishanis was just talking about. It says, this could improve coaching for most of the players. Okay, well, what does this program do, dude? What's this program do? Coach is in its own. Does it? <laughs> Inject. I it's mean, the voice program. Inject. Inject. Drop yields, build SCVs, drop yields, build a depot, don't get supply blocked, don't get supply blocked. It just, it just spams random voice commands at you. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I actually thought about doing something like that, like uh, do a build order or, um, you know, like, like make a guide and then make a YouTube video that's a little like blank, but it's just like, okay, I'm making a supply depot, you know, I'm doing this so that people can kind of practice it easier. But I'm not sure how viable that would be. That's actually what this program is. I was just making fun. I just I hadn't opened the thread yet. This is actually what the thread is. <laughs> it actually is a program, and you can set it to give you reminders for creep spread, worker production, over minerals, upgrades, scouting, chrono boost, supply block, mini map. And it just does it just give you a voice command? So it reads out loud a list. It's like your grandma sitting next to you. Oh, it's like a list. Deeper, and it repeats it during the whole match. <laughs> Okay, so you can have like a macro cycle list. I think this, this is not a bad idea. I've always been like very elitist where I've always been like rather than focus on like these sort of flashy things, like to me, these things can be helpful, but it's kind of like um you know those ab rollers, like all the different workout machines, right? And there's always like those infomercials and it's like this is the muscle blaster three thousand. You can change the attachment and do four thousand different exercises on it and you can get ripped like this giant dude on steroids in the in the ad, right? And I'm always like, yeah, like, or you can just like actually just use some dumbbells and like, you know, the squat rack. Yeah. Get <laughs> results better, right? Like, like, you know, like there's usually like a simpler way to do it. And like with this, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm usually very big on people trying to internalize it, but I know everyone learns differently. So obviously my teaching is very focused on how I learn because that's where I draw my experience from. So for me, it's like, well, if I have an outside person saying this, that's bad for me because it's going to disrupt me because there are times when i want to ignore my macro cycle right i don't want that to just happen yeah actually like, <laughs> yeah. sometimes i need to defend the liberator in my mineral line and it's okay to not be injecting and spending my lava because i've got to spend five seconds dealing with that first so i think it, it's good for a very beginning player maybe for like a few days but i think it's it's kind of bad because starcraft is constantly about reprioritizing what's important in the moment yeah, for sure. Like, actually, the the reason why I started laughing the moment I heard about it is like, I can imagine, you know, you're playing Zerg and you're like, okay, let's turn this on. It's like, you see two proxy gates, it's like, drone, drone. And you're like, but there's proxy <laughs> gates. It's like, drone, drone, overlord, third base. And you're like, oh god, oh god, no. <laughs> yeah. So I like I like the the link Kishanis. I I'm not too big a fan of those programs. I think if if someone's just trying to internalize a macro cycle. Maybe it's not too bad, but I think a post-it note uh, on your monitor does the same thing without having to install a program. Yeah, for opinion. sure. Um, I'm very like like same with like like ab workouts. I'm all about just get down on the ground or, or on a bar and just do some sit-ups and just do some crunches and do some different workouts. Like you know, you don't need one of those silly ab roller things. Like for me, I think it's something which it'll help some people get into it, and that's great for them but I don't think it's necessary. So I'm not sure. I, I might download it just for the lols because I think it'll be really funny to play with it on stream. Yeah, you, sh I, you I, should do I, it. I'm not going to endorse it until I've actually like tried it. And we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it later. We'll, I think I will use it today if it's easy to set up just because it'll be- Yeah, simple. you can use it against me when we play. Just listen to it, everything <laughs> it says. We'll see if it just works. My line. <laughs> I don't want to build the lords right now. No. <laughs> I'm like killing your drones and you're just gonna like keep making drones. I'm like, uh, are you there? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is telling me more drones. I'm good, I'm good, nice. I'm good. Okay, we have a PVC. 
Very nice. Good to have a bit of variety here. For sure. No more turns. Thank God, right? Okay, in the bottom right, <laughs> we have the green Prodas. It is Ibra. Who do we have in top left? Up here we have the yellows. Uh, representing Taste the Bacon, it is Cedo. So uh, hopefully Cedo makes Ibra rage quit over here. Um, you know, we've got to get get some points on the board because uh, <laughs> we're getting destroyed right now. Taste the bacon is is tasting its own bacon right now. We are we are getting destroyed. The Terran pushes have destroyed us. Let's see. Maybe the Protoss players in my clan, they're just like, they don't know how to play, man. And it's like, I don't know. Beastie, Beastie teaches all these sick Terran players, but... <laughs> When he's playing Protoss, he's trolling and making carriers and stuff, man. Yeah, you, <laughs> cool they know how to do. Yeah, if they're learning Protoss from uh, from me, then it's gonna be like Sky Toss for sure. <laughs> not not much else. Maybe, maybe some like you know battery shield, battery rushes, or something like that. But nothing, nothing too good. Nothing too good. But we already see he picked the wrong color. So I mean, there's the, that deviation that uh, they were looking for. Yeah, he's young green. Maybe just like he's like, you know what? I have my own style. I don't yeah. need to just like follow the pack. Like, yeah. I mean, three orange players, three wins. First green one. If it loses, well, we know why. Yeah, that's true. So uh, Ibra already free of any guilt. Definitely not based on skill in game. Just yeah. to do with your color pick if you do lose this one. But it's far from over yet. We've got an adept on the way, and it's going to be getting that warp gate research. Uh, of course, most people opening oracles lately, but uh, you know, do occasionally see some Archon drops, some uh, Adept openings still. This is a reasonably short rush distance on this map, so Odyssey is not a bad map for those ground pressures. Um, both pylons are at the front, and this is nice for Cedo, because Cedo is like, well, any tech you build will be at your wall end. And that's always reassuring as the Zerg, because you know it's going to be very easy to scout what's going on, and it is indeed going to be that Stargate. Yeah, Stargate pretty, pretty standard. The, the one or two oracles, unless he's going for a Sky Protoss, which, you know, I would be very proud, I'm not going to lie. But, um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what he decides to go for. Oh, two AFK drones on the natural. Oh, there we go. They're just having a smoke break. Yeah, they're just chilling, just chilling. Cedo, Cedo has a, uh, there's actually a drone union that Cedo set up. Like, they, they get really good worker conditions. Like, no. they... They get they mini breaks. breaks. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Like, being a drone in Cedo's base is sick. Pretty cool, man. Nice. I mean, Ibra's probes are, I think, on fire. I don't know what this is supposed to be. They're Ooh, moving the fire. Spicy, spicy mix. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. Maybe just to make them run faster. Just kind of light the the back of their feet, legs. <laughs> keep keep yeah. mining. Never Maybe stop. it smells really bad, so they're constantly trying to move faster to get away from the smell. Mm, <laughs> that makes sense, makes sense. Okay, first Oracle in the way, so it's gonna be just one for now. Phoenix as well. Look at Cedo's build. Cedo's trying to do some really, really dirty stuff. There's, oh my god, there's no queen in the main. There's only two queens out. Oh god. Uh-oh. Oh, what do we got? We got 11 seconds on the spore. Oracle's gonna be here. No, it's not gonna go straight in. It's gonna, it's gonna idle. It's gonna idle. Please idle. Give my boy some time for that. He's, he's going for it, but a little bit too late, I think. Uh, you, uh, you can do a hold position. Yeah. It's what is drones. What is this fast layer going to be for? Is it just Bane Speed? Well, he's got Burrow, which I find kind of awesome. Um, he did finish that upgrade, right? No, he cancelled Burrow. Oh, he cancelled Burrow to get the spores, I think. I thought he was going to Burrow Zergens under the third. Oh, yeah, I, I love that. I love that move. It could be Baneling Speed. I don't even know, man. Maybe it's just... Some people just really like a fast layer. I'd say this is, like, the biggest StarCraft habit that people just... Like, it doesn't really have a reason amongst Zerg players and Legacy of the Voyage. Everyone just likes to make their layer. They're like, I have 100 gas. Let's make a layer. And and I actually prefer it to just be a no-use layer like this because a lot of players will then immediately make a Hydra Den off, like, 30 workers and start <laughs> making Hydras off, like, 33 drones. And it's like, okay, you've got three Hydra lists, like... Uh, you don't, and, and, and no economy. Up the third, and you're like, ah. Oh. But this time around, he's actually built a, a, a pretty good work account. You know, he's up to two bases, fully saturated. He's he's got a good drone saturation on the minerals. He does uh, start massing up zerglings here. Meanwhile, double oracle up on the top of the base. Third base is on the way for Ibra. So no real attempt from Cedo to do any pressure. Maybe with these zerglings. I mean, there's only one adept over there, and we've only got one. Oh no, we've got three gateways and going up to six gates. No shield uh, battery. Damage. 
Okay, we'll see. We'll see what he goes over. He's still warping in adepts. Should start working on those uh, those zealots. He's still making oracles as well. So this is gonna be some kind of zealot archon oracle push. I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, there's so many Ooh. zerglings. Yeah, one adept gonna go down. Another adept gonna get surrounded and go down as well. I don't think the third can be sniped, but oracles actually aren't coming back right now. Oh man, gonna get it. Yes, yeah, around on these oracle, these adepts as well. This is great damage for you, bro. Yeah, uh, for, for sure. Cedo, sorry. Um, Hydras are on the way behind it as well, so he's gonna have a really nice follow up. And uh, yeah, I think Ibra being a little bit greedy here, making oracles on mass, but not really using them for defense. He's gonna lose the third base. He's making zealots now. Does have charge and a templar archive. So I'm thinking. With the double forge, it wanted to be like a big three base charge lot archon play. But uh, oh, we're gonna try and engage into the spores. Does kill seven workers, but loses two oracles for it. Yeah, four base Zerg with the gold. He should uh, try transfer. Yeah, there it goes. The transfer. And his economy will just be very, very good. 14 more drones coming up. Why not? There's no immediate threat from Ibra at this point. He's still kind of trying to establish the third base. So, yeah, looking pretty good for uh, Seda right now. Good to see spores going down in that gold as well. Um, there's like, for some reason, Zergs just always forget to build spores at their fourth base. So, thankfully, he does put down two spores there. Uh, we've still got four oracles. So, he's put so many. There's a fleet beacon on the way behind us. So, Ibra doesn't even have high Templar yet. Is making Storm, double upgrades, and going fleet beacon. We've got like a bit of a hybrid play from Ibra where it's like going heavy, heavy ground commitment, but heavy, heavy air commitment without having the eco up for it yet. Oh, the Oracle's going back into the main base, kill some more drones, but he can actually go for the Spore. Some nice little yeah, micro. Oh, very but... nice, and there we go. The rest of those drones are forfeit now. Hydras are hitting the third base, so they are going to be able to kill the third. So it's a, a trade of bases. Not a base trade, but a trade of, of workers for a base. And uh, I think I think with 46 drones up behind it in the gold base, Cedo's totally fine. Just needs to re-establish the spores and with 14 more workers in production, we're just gonna see that economy flood back out. Yeah, Ibra unable to spend his money. Again, the, the fleet beacon a little bit questionable. He can't really spend the you know the money on it because he has no gas income. Oracle's coming back. Yeah, they get cleaned up in the end, and I think Ibra, I mean, like I said, picking that green. There you go. Oh, accidentally attacking the Cybercore. Cedo with a miss A move there. Kills the Cybercore but loses all the Hydras in the pro process. Um, that was actually a little bit sloppy there. Gives it a tiny glimpse of hope. But, uh, I mean, damn, this income. That income, oh my god, three and a half oh my minutes god. a minute. Oh, dude, that's insane. Not actually that much gas income since he hasn't put back on gas in the main. He's only mining two gases right now. So, uh... He's going to start building a lot of Zerglings and hopefully uh, starts fixing up that gas income in the near future. I, I'm really curious about this fleet beacon. Did he want to get a mothership out? Is that why he was uh, rushing it? Or maybe one carrier at a time? He's talking about how, you know, these, these guys watch your stream a little bit too much. Beastie, uh, yeah. It's the double, double ground upgrade carrier play now. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> the thing is, if he got the third up, I reckon Ibra is in like the sickest position right now, right? I think that he's just used to being like, well, I've got my Zealot Storm out, off my three bases, now I drop my Fleet Beacon. But this time he's like, wait, I don't have the money because my third's been denied a few times in a row. But yeah. with Storm out, there is always hope. There is always hope. Six High Templar, and in about a minute's time, they're going to have double Storms. For now, just six Storms, and no Banelings morphed yet. You're going to uh, need Banelings to clean up this army, Cedo. He doesn't see it, though. He's, he is very, very out of position. Morphing some Banes. We'll see if he can get to the third base. Oh, Ibra's moving out. Oh, he don't want to do that. Oh, one zealot goes <laughs> in that direction. He oh. sees the army. But does Seto know about all those High Templars chasing behind him? Some Warpins coming in. He needs to be very, very careful how he engages this. Oh my god, the storms are going to be disgusting. Storms <laughs> everything. And just like that. Protoss TM right there. <laughs> Crashes. Gas income still isn't very high. Cedo, un he's, okay, there we go. He's put, put gas. He's mining six gases now. He's making a ton of banelings, which are the right unit, but without the core of hydralisks behind them, this could be problematic. Bane speed and two one upgrades will be ready 
I mean, he's got two and a half thousand minerals, but not, not enough lava. With this sort of economy, you really need lots of macro hatcheries to help make up for it. He's going to try to come down and engage this. Oh, there we go, be... Bane Speed finally finishing. Oh, Ibra oh. needs to be so careful about for these Banes. This is one of those moments where he kills an army and is like, Oh my god, I can finish! I killed so many units! But, uh... I don't, I don't know if you realize the extent of uh, Seto's economy that's going on right now with the gold base. The problem but... is lava though. Seto, once again, move commanding uh, past the Protoss units. Oh my god, is he gonna get the High Templar? No, no, no. That High Templar actually finishes that Hydra. High Templar with a single kill from its auto attack. The first time I've ever killed a high, seen a High Templar kill an actual unit with its little 5 damage pea shooter. Yeah, it happened. But, uh, we, we just saw it. If Cedo spends his money, dude, he's he's out of control, right? But he just doesn't have the gas income right now, and that's really what's holding him back. Yeah, and another problem is, even if he did spend the money, it would be just mass zerglings because of no gas, and then, you know, storm zealots and archons. I mean, if you want to make some units against zerglings, it's it's those. It's all about this storm. Oh my god. He zealots away from the banelings, and if he can storm those banelings, he will be able to take this. This is a scary zealot archon force. The only counter to this is just pure baneling right now. Yeah, there's some zergs on the way. It's all about the size storm. Is he gonna connect? Where is the size storm? Most of the banelings actually. Oh my god. Storms. No storm at all. Goes down. Gets picked off straight away. Now, Ibra, I feel like overextending quite a bit. I would have loved if he just took his own gold. Just kind of sent a little bit of a, you know, Zelda run by on the gold, a little bit of Zelda run by on the top. Just kind of bought himself a little bit of time. He got more Archons, more High Templars, because his opponent is not transitioning to, you know, any higher tech. No Lurkers coming, you know, no Ultras, no Brood Lords. So if he just stayed on this tech, but kind of just prolonged the game and got his economy up, I think he would have been in a pretty decent position. But as is, Seto still uh, needs to grab those gases, start taking to something else just so he can uh, oh, spend those minerals by, though. this is gonna find the damage oh my god those plus two zerglings just ravage that worker line 20 probes gone in the blink of an eye ibra zealots come in but uh, it's a little bit too late there small zealot counter attack he's gonna hit the goal, but, uh, ibra knows he's down and out gg gg on the very board. nice we taste the bacon we're not gonna we're not gonna be completely clean swept and uh, it turns out when the Beastie Boys pick green, they do indeed lose the video games. So, go yeah, Beastie Boys. it seems so. It seems so.